And then again, click back on the material. And you may have to open this up, but it's under the volume settings here. We have our channel plugged into our scatter, and now we have a scatter and absorption to play around with. Uh, so if you raise the scatter, that's going to scatter more light through the fog volume. So as light goes in, it's going to scatter it around more. And in fact, you can over crank this more and more and it'll actually become kind of an emissive object. It's, it's pumping, uh, it's bouncing around more light than it's actually coming in. So it's gonna start uh, illuminating itself. Uh, and then of course, the lower that is, the less it's gonna scatter kind of a stormy look um, and you know while you're doing this again feel free to go back to that volume builder here under your shader field and then go through here and it's like hey this global scale if you turn this down to like 10 you'll get a very fine result which is eventually what we're going to end up at however if you go in here to like 300 you're going to get uh, of course you know larger representation of that noise uh, here and again just like we did uh, earlier you can animate this too so you can animate this noise with the fog uh, there is a caveat uh, let's go ahead and turn this ipr render off so we can just do this uh, if i go through here and i say okay just like we did with the water animation speed of let's say five loop period of three so it loops then we go over here and we play uh, it's going to play a little slowly because it's a kind of intensive <laughs> process. But you see, uh, it is actually animating and I, it probably is updating this. If it doesn't, just go up one level and you see in the field options, go down here to refresh frame. And that way, if you are animating your noise, it's going to be guaranteed to animate your fog. Uh, but it seems to be animating, so I think we're okay. However, I'm not really looking to animate this. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and we'll go back down here to... Animation speed of zero and loop of zero. And you know what? We'll turn this global scale back down to 100. And let's go ahead and turn our IPR, IPR render back on. Uh, let's go to our RS volume and let's talk about, again, the scatter coefficient and the absorption. Basically, scatter is going to scatter more light through and absorption is either going to absorb more light the higher it goes uh, or less light the lower this goes. So you can dial this in to get, you know, very cloud-like looks. So we can scatter more and then absorb less and you'll get very wispy uh, cottony clouds or uh, the opposite, depending on what you're going for. Um, you can also change these tint colors. Uh, you can go through here and tint the gradient. Essentially, you know, you can go through here and change the low range. If you want to do a dark blue instead of a black or a kind of a warmer white, you can do that. Uh, you can also tint the entire thing. So if you go in here and that's going to change your black to white values in here. Um, you can also do an overall tint. So we click here and we say, okay, let's give us, let's do a red for our scatter. And then we'll go down here to absorption and we'll do a uh, I don't know, hot pink or something like that. There we go. Now you can see as we change these values, go ahead and do a really high scatter and a really low absorption. You're going to see you're going to get a really cool uh, fog volume kind of effect. And it's going to play that red tint against that pink tint there. So again, very, very cool looks. And while you're doing all this, always remember you can go in here and update these fields at any time. And that'll update the look. So now we're getting kind of a very light foam uh, uh, result. Uh, so let's go back to our RS volume here. I'm going to change this uh, back to white. Uh, or we're doing SpongeBob, so let's just choose a, a yellow for our tint and a yellow for our absorption. And then we're going to turn these down quite a bit. We want it to be pretty solid foam. And if you if you're moving the slider around, uh, you know you kind of want to let it go so we can update over here. You can also hold down Alt, and that'll give you smaller values as you drag. So if you want to do very minute changes, just hold down Alt as you grab these sliders. And then I'll give you smaller numbers here. So we're going to do a little less scatter, more absorption. And the higher, the whiter we make our absorption, the looks like more of the, the more it acts on it. So, you know, if I, if I keep lightening this up, it's going to get crazier and crazier. So I'm going to keep it pretty white, maybe just a little, little off yellow here. For, again, for the absorption. And then I can just go in here and grab these values. So it absorbs a little bit less. Again, whatever, whatever you're kind of looking for for your final look. Uh, and then again, I want this to be kind of foam-like. So I'm going to go back into my Volume Builder Field, Shader Field, and we're going to go click on that, and we're going to say, you know, drop this down to 10. And if that changes your overall look, remember you can go back in here. Let's increase the scatter and increase the absorption. There we go. So now we got a nice foam look going. Uh, incidentally, if you go back to the volume builder, remember you're playing around with a, in a fog multiply. And in that fog multiply, you have the shader field telling that fog multiply where to go. Uh, you also have kind of global settings for this field. So if we go back to 
fog multiply and we go back to blending, you're going to see there's a layer opacity. You can drop this down. And that's going to kind of contain that fog multiply a bit. But, uh, you know, I'll keep that cranked up pretty high. And remember, if you want that fog smooth to run after the fog multiplier, after you make it into foam, you just drag that fog multiply underneath and then it'll do your foam look first and then it'll smooth your foam look based on your smooth uh, settings. So in this case, I don't want that to happen. I'm going to keep my multiply at top. Uh, just remember that's an option. Also, I don't need this chunk taken out of his head anymore. So I'm going to take this cube and just delete it. So now that it's no longer a child of the volume builder, uh, it'll ignore it. It'll take it out of this volume builder stack and we're kind of back to where we started. Uh, so now we have kind of a foam look for this head. And there is one caveat. If I was to move this head, uh, the head would actually swim through this noise, uh, kind of like what we have here. As this skull kind of goes through this fog, and this is the whole reason I got into foam and fog earlier as I was playing around with this. Uh, as I have my skull swimming through this fog, that noise is kind of staying uh, static. Now you can move and animate that noise but as far as I know, and if I'm wrong, you know, please leave a comment. Uh, there's no way to attach this noise in our uh, volume fog multiply shader field to this object. So in this case, it's not a huge deal because when I animated this, you know, it's going to be back here. So when I actually play it, you're going to see, let's go ahead and start this over. Um, you're not going to notice any of this fine fog swimming through there. Um, if your camera is really close, you could, uh, but in our case, it didn't really affect us. Uh, speaking of this, you're gonna see there's some big divots and chunks taken out of this object. Um, and again, we want that to follow with. Those big chunks, if those are swimming through our object, we got a problem, right? So we've got one, dis one displacer creating our face that has our displacement map in it. Let's go ahead and with our subdivision surface selected, hold down shift, long click our displacer, our deformers go down here to displacer and now we have displacer one. I'm going to move this down just to keep us organized. So now we have two displacers, one displacer with a uh, under shading with our displacement map plugged in. So we get our face and then this displacer, we're going to use this like we normally do. So uh, this displacer selected, uh, go in here to shading, go down here to noise. Let's click on our noise so we can get more options. Let's go uh, instead of just plain old noise, let's go up here to hammer. Let's go down here to contrast and crank that up. So now I'm getting kind of some chunks on here. Of course, uh, you know, the white parts are chunking out. I want the opposite to happen. So I'm going to go up one level. I go over here to object. And again, we have uh, intensity or intensity centered. And then we also have our height. So if I go through here and change it to negative 10, it'll give us our divots, but it's also going to inflate our face. Uh, we only want this effect to go inward. So again, instead of intensity centered, just make it intensity. And now these, these holes or these divots are going to be punched into our head here. And again, if you want to see this in action, let's go ahead and turn off Volume Builder uh, so we can see over here in our viewport. Or I guess you can look in the render too. Uh, this is a result. You'll get a little bit of a faster result. So here we are just kind of punching holes into this object here. Again, we can go back into shading, click on the noise. Uh, we can change the scale. So if we want to scale it down a little bit, have more hole punched in or maybe 150. Have a, have a few uh, less. And then depending on where these end up on the face, let's go ahead and turn on our volume builder. Uh, you may want to play with that random seed to get a little bit better placement. And then remember, go up a level over back over to object. And maybe we'll just say negative 10. So they're not quite so distinct. Negative eight. All right, that'll work. And back over here to shading. And again, we'll play this random seed. We'll just type in 300. It'll move those dots around in a random order. So just kind of find something that works for the render that you're going for. And there we go. We got our foam head rendered. And uh, if we want to have it so that it's driven by this head, we need to make this head now a soft body. 